Uh, Deuteronomy 5, 6. We don't have to turn to it, but it says, love the Lord with all your heart. Let's go there because I think this is important. Deuteronomy so 6, 5 says, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God for with all thy heart. And he didn't just stop there with all thy heart, he says, and with all thy soul. And that soul is our will, our intellect, it's how we think, it's the, the thought process that we have. So not only is it with our heart, but it's also with our soul and with all our might. So he really said three things. He said, love God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. So why couldn't he just stop there by just saying, love God? With all, you know, just love the Lord. No, he wanted to make sure we understood that he wanted your heart involved in it. He wants your soul involved in it. That's where your choices are. That's where your thoughts are. That's where your emotions are. And then he said also with all your might. So that's what everything within you, he wants us to love him uh, just like that. And then he tells us to love our neighbors as thyself. So Mark 12, uh, 31 says that. Let's go there. And the second is like, namely this, thou shall love thy neighbor as thyself. And actually in my Bible, I don't know about yours, but in my Bible, I'm looking out of the King James Version, um, it's all capitalized. So Jesus is saying it like if, if you were to, you know, like when you do texting or when you do uh, emails, when you do capitals, that's actually the person shouting. <laughs> well, in my book, Jesus is shouting, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Uh, there is none other commandment greater than thee. So the first one, let's go back to verse 30, because this is where, it, well, let's go to 29. Um, he says, and Jesus, well, let's go to 28. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and one of the, the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving, perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, what is the first commandment of all? Now, we know that God's law is the Ten Commandments, right? But what he did is he reduced them in the New Testament. He reduced them into two things. Verse 29, it says, and Jesus answered him, the first of all the commandments is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love thy Lord, thy God, with all thy heart and with all thy uh, soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Verse 31. And the second is like namely this. So he, he basically said it's just like the first. He says, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater, greater than these. So... He really likened us liking our uh, neighbors as ourself as liking him with our whole heart, with our whole soul, and with everything within us. That's what his expectation is. He really wants us to get that. He wants us to do it with our heart, with our mind, and with, with everything that was, that's within us. Uh, as it pertains to loving our neighbor as ourself. When you think about loving yourself, there's some things you just wouldn't put up with. You don't want nobody talking, talking down at you. You don't want anybody uh, disrespecting you. Um, you know, you, you, you want some things for yourself. And God is saying, whatever it is that you want, that's what we need to give. Whatever it is that you want, that's what we need to give. So if it's understanding, if it's, if it's, if it's um, uh, mercy, you know, okay, I did something wrong, but I need you to give me a pass on this. You would want someone to give you a pass. You don't want someone to keep continuously over and over bringing up the same thing that you even apologize for. You don't want that to keep put, be, be put on your, in your face. You don't want that. So then we, can, we can't do that. So, because the scripture also says that you reap what you sow. So if you sow that into a person, you know, every time you turn around, they're reminding you of your shortcoming. Well, guess what? You're going to be reminded of your shortcomings. And nine times out of 10, it doesn't come from the person that you've been doing it to. It comes from somebody else that, and it, and it hurts your feelings. So you, 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 you got to make sure that you love your brothers as you would love yourself. What do you require? How do you want people to treat you? 
What do you want? How do you want them to, to respect you? That's what you give because you're going to reap what you sow. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Uh, Romans 13, 10. Let's go there. Romans 13, 10. Uh, it says, love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of the law. Think about it. It's fulfilling the law. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Let's park there. So what that's saying is love does no harm to his neighbor. Love doesn't do any harm to his neighbor. We're, we're trying to live this, this life out. Not just see, uh, we talked about Sunday, not just being a hearer of the word, but literally attaching our heart, our soul, and our, our, our might with everything that God is trying to say here today. I'm pleading with you with, with everything within me that, that really God, if we want our finances to work, we want our marriages to work, we want our, our uh, relationships on our jobs, whatever it is that you're believing God for, we got to perfect this first because everything works from it. Otherwise, we're like those, those symbols over there. Noisy, busy, irritating. And so God is endeavoring for us to get something here today. And we got to embrace it because it's no more me, my four, and no more. Me, myself, and I. Everything about God is all about love. It's all about shedding your love. God gave. And see, that's what love does. It gives. It's not, it's not looking at what it can get. It's actually looking at what it can give. We all, we, because a lot of us have been so um, uh, starving for things or affection or whatever the case is, we find ourselves always, gimme, 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 as opposed to let me give, 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 give. Having a generous spirit. You know, we're, we're constantly uh, feeling depleted and, and, and like we, we just got to keep giving, 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 not understanding that what, when you give, you'll get back. It's just that simple. So love is the fulfillment of the law. Do to others as you would have them to do to you. That's what Luke 6.31. Let's go there because I, I, and I, I know it's a lot of scriptures tonight, but God, I want, I want you to hear it and see it in the word as opposed to taking my word for it. Don't, don't take my word for it. It's in the book, like Pastor always used to say. Don't take my word for it. It's in there. So Luke 6.31. Luke 6.31. What's love got to do with it? Got to do with it. <laughs> it has everything to do with it. All right. Uh, 631 says, For if you love them which love you, what thank have you? For sinners also love those that love them. Interesting. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank you? Ye have the have ye for sinners also do even the same and if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive what thank ye or have ye for sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again but love your enemies and do good and lend hoping for nothing again now it's saying for your enemies do that but we got to do that for not people, people that, you know, maybe misunderstand us and all that, that they're not our enemies, but he's saying, do this. And it says, and, and your reward will be great. Your reward will be great, not small, great. And you shall be the children of the highest for he is kind unto the unthankful um, and to the evil. Be ye therefore merciful as your father also is merciful. So God wants us to be merciful. He really does. He wants us to, uh, to treat people like we uh, want to be treated. Love takes no account of a suffered wrong. Proverbs 10, 12. 
Hatred stirs up. This is what uh, Proverbs 10, 12 says. Hatred stirs up dissension, but love covers all wrongs. Love covers all wrongs. The scripture also says love covers a multitude of sins. So a whole bunch of sin. It just co keeps covering it. just keeps covering it. It doesn't, it doesn't look at the sin and singles it out and continuously puts in that person's face, you've sinned. Love is generous. It goes the distance and finishes strong. Love is generous. It's always thinking outside of themselves. It's not selfish at all. It's always looking at not what you need, but what does that person need? Because when we can get out of looking at what we need, then we can really be more effective in, in really helping God carry out this, this passion of his. This is a passion for him. You know, the passion of Christ. He was passionate about us when he sent his son. He said, he, he said, he said in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whomsoever believeth him shall not, uh, no, notice it said, he gave his only begotten son. That's begotten really talks about, I think in the Greek, it talks about um, unique, one of a kind. He gave his one of a kind, the unique part of himself. He gave that for us. And so we have the ability to give us to other people. Does that make sense? We have that ability. Everybody has the ability. We talked about having love. That Galatians 5, uh, 6 says that faith worketh by love. So we need to hire love for our faith to work. We need to hire love. Look at love as um, an employee. Love is always calling for a job. We have the, the authority to hire love but we've been denying love's employment. We have been treating love like an unwanted telemarketer. We don't even give love a shot when a situation calls for it. Just like we do the telemarketer, we quickly dismiss love. We don't have time to hear what love is trying to tell us. And we tell love, we're just not interested. Just like we tell the telemarketer, we're not interested. Or we just hang up. We tell love, don't call again. <laughs> you know, like we tell the telemarketer, don't call again. And then we say, we put love on a do not call list. <laughs> Because love, see, the thing about telemarketers, they're persistent, aren't they? Well, guess what? Love is just that way, too. Love is persistent, and it will call back, but sometimes we ignore the calls. You know when you see it on your caller ID? You know what? That's an 800 number. You ignore it. Well, love is, is persistent. It's always trying to call. Are you, are you picking up, or are you just ignoring it? I would venture to say that we are in violation of the EEO. Y'all know what the EEO is? Equal Employment Opportunity. We have discriminated love from employment. We have employed fear and doubt and anger and strife, sin. We've employed all those. When love actually has a perfect resume and can get the job done. Let's talk about love's qualifications. Love can cast out all fear. 1 John 4.18 says, perfect love casts out fear. Love is patient. Now, you know, when you're on your job and they, you, you, you have the interview, they gonna, you need to be these things. This is what the qualifications of love. Okay, love is patient, love is kind. Love is patient. Let's stop there. Love is patient. So it's, it's going to take the time. To wait. <laughs>